We're going to move swiftly on now to to to, to Bryony. Uh, I'm going to introduce Bryony to, to to this webinar, and she's going to present. Uh, her, well, she's the keynote speaker for for this after this afternoon, and she's going to share how AI can be used in education for you as students and use as an enhancement and not uh, as a replacement. So we're going to seamlessly move Bryony onto the screen now. Hello. Hi, Bryony. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Good. No worries. So uh, if, we, if we could just ask you to share your screen, Bryony, and then yes, once you've shared, right. then making sure you include computer sounds. OK, can we see that? Yeah, brilliant. And once you're ready. Wow. Off you go. You move over here. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to be here this afternoon. Um, I'm really delighted to have an opportunity to talk to you all about AI, which is absolutely my favourite topic of conversation at the moment. Uh, my name is Bryony Evert Hackfoot, and I'm the Director of Teaching, Learning and Education for Colleague Siagar and Colleague Heredigion. So uh, some of you might be familiar with our college. Um, and we, like many places, are on a big AI um, learning curve at the moment. Um, and my responsibility, my remit is to support staff um, and enabling them to bring AI ethically and safely into the classroom and also um, for innovation too. So I just wanted to share a little bit of um, our thinking as an organisation around AI, some top tips, some ideas, um, and, and hopefully to springboard your thinking and your confidence um, to explore the potential of this, of this area. So with of AI, I've actually brought in a special guest. Uh, so without further ado, I shall hand over. To AI or not to AI? That is the question. Whether it is nobler to avoid temptation altogether or to embrace and brave being fully consumed. Or to find perhaps a middle ground. As in that space, what achievements may be found? So. A better question is, when to AI and how to AI? Thank you, Shakespeare. So people are nervous about AI and understandably um, people from teachers, I think students, industry, um, there's a real worry around what AI means and how that impacts learning, how that impacts uh, work, how that impacts interaction with people um, and I have spent a lot of time thinking about how do we want to approach this in our, our in our institution and we've come up with AI or Shakespeare's off again so we have um oh it's not letting me go back hang on one second sorry so we have a really um specific philosophy and our approach to AI is that it's enhancement not replacement so what do I mean by that AI can't replace people. That's not what we're looking at. We are looking at where can AI enhance the productivity? Where can it enhance the innovation? Where can it streamline practices? Where can it buy people space, perhaps for some of the more mundane activities to focus on the more creative? These are the things that we really believe in with AI is that it's very much about enhancement and not replacement. And, and you've probably heard people talking about it as well. You know, well, is AI going to replace jobs in the future? Who knows where the future is going? But right now, in all of my research, in all of my experimentation with AI, in all the conversations that I'm having with everybody, it all comes down to AI needs you. It needs people. It needs people to learn. It needs people in order to have a professional judgment on the output that it gives you. I spend a lot of time generating content in AI for all different types of things. And I would never, ever send it off in its raw form. I'm always the buffer between the AI and the final destination of the thing that I'm that I'm working on. Um, I am yet to find in my journey of AI in education where I'm not pivotal um, to the to the role of AI. And that's something that I really want you to think about as learners is that AI is a tool. It's an extra tool in the same way that a Google search might be, in the same way that going to the library, in the same way of having a conversation, all the different ways in which you go about your learning. AI is another tool to add to your toolkit. Um, 
what we've tried to do here in the college is demystify the tech around it a little bit. Um, I think there's been a lot of sort of talk about it being very techy. AI is very techy. Well, we've kind of ditched that. And what we're going with is the notion of you just talk to AI and you learn the best way to use it. Um, I specifically use ChatGPT4. Um, and when I started, I look back at some of my original questions that I asked it, um, and I've learned key buzzwords that gives me a better response, gives me a better answer, gives me richer content that I can use. Um, and there's no secret formula to that. It's just talking to it. It's just playing. It's just learning its capabilities and what it can do, what it can do well, which is a lot, but also there are things it can't do, lots of things. Um, it doesn't have empathy. Um, it doesn't put feeling and emotion into text. It doesn't uh, it doesn't pull on the heartstrings. Um, it doesn't give depth. You know, there are lots of things that it doesn't do. Um, and I think what we need to do together is look at how it can best serve us as as the education sector. So key for us, it's enhancement, not replacement. It doesn't replace work. It doesn't replace learning. It can enhance learning. It can extend learning. It can absolutely fuel your curiosity, but it won't. You must make sure it doesn't replace your learning process. It enhances it. You are pivotal. You are there to help the AI learn. It's an algorithm at the end of the day, yeah? Um, and, and you are absolutely essential into that process. And there is demystify the tech um, and just talk to it, talk to it back and forth um, with my uh, chat GPT. I can have backwards and forwards conversations and I'm actually gonna show you an example of that a little bit later in terms of how that can that can be developed. Um, so there's four kind of key areas for us as an institution and actually not just us as an institution, us as a society. I think we need to have an agreement in, in our approach to AI and the top one is all of us need to make sure that we take responsibility for using AI ethically, um, not using it to replace our thinking not using it to replace an activity that we might be doing in order to sort of prove learning, prove experience, prove skills. We've all got a duty, all of us, teachers, leaders, people in the work sector, everywhere, yourselves, to make sure that we're using it in an ethical way. And that's something that when you're playing with AI, have a think. Is this ethical? Is this cheating me out of a learning experience? Am I am I putting something forward that isn't me? That isn't isn't uh, isn't who I am? And I'm finding the more I use um, chat in particular, you do see the little isms that come up that can that can give it away. It likes particular words. It likes particular phrasing. Um, and the more you use it, you can see the source bank that it's that it's um, accessing as well. So we've all got a collective duty to make sure that we are using it ethically. This one's really, really important. Um, I can't stress enough if you are playing with AI, Never, never just as a blanket rule ever put in personal data about yourself or anybody else. Um, that's a blanket rule we have here in the college um, and it's it's something that we won't change. That's something we're absolutely we're stuck to. You know, the moment you start putting in your personal information into AI banks, that information goes out um, and it can be accessed. So just have a really, really strict rule with yourself. No personal information into AI. Um, it can really, really streamline your work practices. Um, we're actually doing a lot of here, work here sort of in administration um, and looking at where we can support people to streamline what they're doing. Just as a side note, I had someone who was a little bit sceptical about the benefits of AI. Um, so I worked with them and it their biggest thing that they don't enjoy doing is Christmas shopping. So we popped into ChatGPT4 to come up with the list of uh, present ideas. From there, I got it to cost it all up for me. And then from there, I got it to tell me which shop I needed to go in order to buy it. Um, so that definitely reduced his stress and pressure in the run up to Christmas. AI very much took a, a big chunk of the weight off his shoulders. Um, so there are lots of ways, the more you play with AI, the ways that you can see that it can benefit you day to day. And again, I've got a little example to show you at the end. Um, and this is the biggest one. It's 
so incredible for fueling your innovation and your creativity. Um, the little video you saw at the beginning is um, a, a video I made. Uh, it took me about five minutes to make that video. If they don't take too long, a couple of different pieces of software. It's a completely original image because it's been AI generated. So it's what they call a seed image. So it's um, a collection of just different pixels that have been brought together in order to create um, that likeness of William Shakespeare. The text is mine that I wrote in, and then I used a piece of software in order to put the text to the image and to bring it alive um, as William Shakespeare. Um, and that is part of one of our uh, um, team teaching with pioneers uh, initiatives that we're doing here in the college where we're working with teachers to actually tap into different sort of industry specialists and pioneers um, in order, such as Isambard Kingdom Brunel is another one that we have in order to bring learning alive a little bit and being a little bit creative um, and very much thinking around the platform that's being shared here, the potential of those kind of um, those pioneer videos to help really bringing asynchronous materials alive for students as well. Um, there are lots of platforms with different AI. We as a college are sticking at source. We're sticking with ChatGPT. It can create images, which are absolutely amazing. It can, all the images that you're seeing in this um, presentation have all been produced by um, my, my chat account. Um, and again, that's me going in, describing what I want and then it producing it. Um, and, and then I can go in and I can shape it and I can change it, do whatever I want with it in order to make it suit. We come back to ethics. There are lots of questions that come from the things that you can do from an innovation perspective in ChatGPT. Um, there's no blueprint at the moment. There's no, everyone is trying to just very steadily figure out what this means for teachers, what this means for students, what this means for education, and thinking about how's assessment going to evolve? How are we going to change what we do in education in order to adapt to the potential and the capabilities uh, that AI has, has brought us? AI has been around for a really, really long time, but it's never quite been in its sort of um, the public setting that it has been since it arrived in November the previous year um, through the original chat GPT 3.5, you know, so the access is is much, much broader now and there'll be lots of different platforms, I'm sure, already within your schools where they're talking about AI. So here are just a couple of examples of how you might use AI. There are infinite possibilities, um, but I just wanted to give you a flavour of some of the things that you could do. Um, there are lots and lots of different apps and software um, where you can choose um, to suit your type uh, of approach to learning and how you like to approach um, your studies. You can use it for quick research. My goodness me, it turns around information pretty quickly um, in order to give you an insight into a particular thing that you might be looking into. Um, I've uh, tested it by putting some of my own writing uh, essays from courses I've done into ChatGPT4 um, and it's given me feedback which was really really brilliant actually so it gave me points for development um, it gave me bits that they thought it was that was uh, working really well and then it gave me sort of a holistic statement on how I can improve and I have to be honest um, it was very kind its language was very nice to me which was much appreciated um, but just to have that instant access to some feedback was fantastic you know that might be something perhaps if you're developing confidence in your work and your writing and you want a bit of feedback um there's tools out there that can that can do that for you um i'm going to show you this particular example but it can be an amazing revision buddy um through coming up with practice questions practice assessments um timetabling your revision which i'll show you in a second you can learn languages you can translate you can um use it to help access um improve accessibility to certain tools um, you could have a career and progressions uh, advice on tap. Um, I put an example in the other day um, to give me information on how I might want to go in a particular career. And it told me all the different things I needed to think about at uh, universities that I could apply to. Um, at the tip of my fingers, it was able to do this for me. So you have, I suppose, uh, a, a person next to you on tap with AI where you can go in and you can ask questions. Um, and again, coming back to thinking about being though ethical, safe, 
effective and innovative. Those four things we always have to assess ourselves by to make sure that what we're doing in the AI space um, is 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 professional. Yeah, and we're we're thinking about integrity. We're thinking about professional conduct. So. Um, I wanted to show you this example. So I did this in ChatGPT4 this morning. OK, so um, I put into my chat bar. I am an A-level learner studying WJC, AS Chemistry, Law and English Language. Please, can you create a revision planner for me to cover each of the subjects? I would like to revise for six hours a week in total and would like the planner to cover six weeks. Uh, I prefer to have interactive activities to help me learn. So this is called a prompt. Um, you have probably heard that term already. So that's completely my writing. I wrote that in. Um, I could do whatever I wanted with that. I could say I prefer to read. I prefer to um, watch videos, whatever, whatever it is you want to do. So I put that into my chat and within 10 seconds, if that, uh, it produced this. So it clarified for me what I was asking. So this is the response from ChatGPT. Um, and it gave me an overview of how it planned to build my revision schedule. Then it broke down each subject. So it's telling me, so for chemistry, I need to do up to two hours. Um, I'm sure I'd need to do a little bit more than that, but you get where I'm going with this. Um, so I do two hours of chemistry um, homework a week. Um, and in week one, it's telling me how to use my time. So they want me to do topic review and quizzes, looking at um, uh, looking at flashcards and problem solving. So it's broken it down for me what I should be doing in chemistry. And then it goes on to do the same in law. And then it goes on the same to do it in English as well. So at the tip of my fingers, it's given me a six week revision plan uh, in the run up to an assessment, which probably would have taken me a really long time to figure out logistically what I needed to do where because what it does what AI does is it looks for the best version of the thing that you're asking yeah so it's thought about learning progression it's thought about what are good revision techniques um it's thought about what might that syllabus need and it's gone away and it's thought about that and it's presenting it to me and then from there, then it's given me an overview of sort of tips for uh, success. So being flexible, thinking about active learning, regular break, breaks, seeking feedback, all these kinds of things. So just very, a very quick example there to show you a little bit of thinking outside the box. That's ethical. That's safe. It's effective. And it's innovative. It hits all four. I'm comfortable that those hit all four for what it is that I'm I'm utilizing the AI for. So I wanted to share that with you as just a, a little example. So let's remember the key things. I want you to be ethical, um, acknowledge and cite the as, uh, assistance received from AI tools in all of your work. Be safe, be aware um, implications of using AI, especially including sort of data privacy and safety. But be smart with this, OK? Avoid over-reliance on AI for learning. Yeah, it's a learning tool, not a learning replacement. And nothing, nothing, nothing replaces you. Um, AI can't replace you. You are fundamental in using your professional judgment and integrity into how you use AI and the content it gives you and how you then transpose that into your studies. Uh, nothing beats your own creativity. Nothing beats your critical thinking. Those are what make you you um, and AI can't replace that. And that's really, really important to remember. Um, so what's your role in the AI journey? Um, you have a really, really important role in, in this um, and just sort of not to make myself sound too old and, and fuddy duddy. But, um, you know, when I was a student, um, we didn't have access to this type of technology. I didn't get a mobile phone until I was 18. And then it was like this big red brick of a thing called Motorola, which I don't even know if that's even a thing anymore. Um, you know, my educational experience was was really different. Um, and it's different to your experience of what you've got access to now. Um, so we're on this journey together. We're learning together. And what I ask of you is support your teachers. They will support you, as I'm sure you already know, and you support them too in the learning of how this technology is working in your day to day lives. You will be probably 
not to make assumptions, but more tech savvy than perhaps some people that you're you're being taught by, but work together um, and don't have that as a barrier. Have that as actually a really exciting thing, because I can promise you teachers love nothing more than learning from their learners. I, I promise you that I love it when I get new nuggets of information or new ways to do things that a learner has shown me. So be forthcoming in how you're utilizing your AI. Be transparent. That comes back to ethical. Um, don't hide its use. Don't hide what you're doing with it. Share it. Share it with your peers. Share it with your tutor. Enjoy it and be creative. It's phenomenal what it can do. Absolutely incredible. And be an active part of the digital revolution. This is happening to all of us and not just in education. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows where it's going to go? Um, but it moves fast. And we need to do all four of these things together so that we can keep up with it. Um, I've written just as a, a boring side note, I've written an AI policy and I'm already starting version three uh, and I only wrote it before the summer. That's how quickly AI is moving is there's always something new. There's a new thing we need to think about, a new potential challenge or a new potential opportunity. Um, and you are absolutely fundamental in helping us establish what those may or may not be and how and what we need to do. Um, you know, I know for us as a college, we want AI in our community and we want it to be used used well. Um, and you are absolutely pivotal to that. Um, probably just a general piece of advice. Um, your schools will have advice and guidance um, on on AI in, in your educational settings. So make sure you're aware of what those are. Be familiar with it. Um, and do your best to work to those ideas and those policies. And that will vary as places are learning. As I say, there's no blueprint for AI. We're, we're figuring it out as we go. And just to remember, um, we're all learning together. Um, and I, I can't stress that enough. Um, and I just wanted to leave you with some final words from one of our um, team teaching with pioneers. Good morning, students. Today, we're going, going to embark on a journey, on a journey not just, just across the skies, but through, through the very essence, essence of what it means to be brave, to take risks, and to push beyond the boundaries of what we believe is possible. My name is Amelia Earhart, and you might know me as the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. But my story isn't just about setting records or earning accolades. It's about the spirit of exploration and the courage to pursue dreams, even in the face of uncertainty. Pushing boundaries is what drives progress. Throughout history, every significant achievement has come from someone stepping outside their comfort zone and challenging the status quo. In my time, women were often discouraged from pursuing careers in fields like aviation, but I believed that the sky was no limit, not for me nor for any other woman. By pushing those societal boundaries, I hope to inspire others to chase their own unconventional dreams. Let's relate this to your studies and future aspirations. You're at a pivotal point in your education where the decisions you make and the risks you take can set the course for your future. Embrace the challenges you encounter, use them to fuel your growth, and remember that it's okay to be afraid. What matters is that you don't let that fear hold you back. Now, let's dive deeper into specific aspects of my journey and how they can apply to your own paths. Remember, the sky is just the beginning. So, keep it ethical, keep it safe, keep it effective and really enjoy the innovation. Thank you so much. Great, thank you ever so much, um, Brian. That that was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I have to say it was very thought provoking. Um, um, yeah, absolutely a fantastic presentation there. Uh, and like you said, I'm, I'm sure, well, I'm sure AI is being used by students, teachers outside of school already. And it was you just shared some insightful examples of how AI can be used effectively for their for students in, in their studies. And uh, I quite like the the career uh, progress or um, outlining what how uh, AI can be used to maybe plot your next steps in, in education. And I'm sure that uh, many of our viewers either live today or uh, when they watch back the recordings, they may think, actually, what am I going to do after university? And this using AI could help help you with that. So uh, thank you so much. No problem. Thank, thank you for having me. No, thank you for that, Bryony.